Oh my goodness, David. Why would Magnus choose this path? Because rook c2, going right after f2, which hits h2, and also a2. Do you like this decision from Magnus? He doesn't look too bothered, but the evaluation bar is. He doesn't look bothered, but I would be terrified allowing this capture with a check and another capture. This is maybe what Magnus has missed. Will we see a reaction on the camera? We do. Magnus is saying, what have I done? Horns, still any chances for a win? This looks a lot like that game against Levon from yesterday. And for black, you have the worst pawns. They're all isolated. That means another pawn can't defend it. You have to use your more valuable pieces. But look at Magnus. He's trying to counter. He's trying to put pressure on white's vulnerable pawns. And if you go rook b8, white will play this little move, rook to a2, and just keep everything honest. So look at the rook swing over here. David, this is not going to be easy for Magnus. And he does give up the h pawn. And Magnus does make it look easy. Is his point now that... You give a palm a check, but b2 is falling. If you push b2, down goes c3, and the whole chain will just collapse. Yeah, <laughs> genius endgame play by both sides, I've got to say. I think Farouche is slightly panicking. Maybe he needed to just consolidate there, bring the white king nearer to the center. But uh, yeah, Magnus, great decision. Another uh, great uh, little nugget there for everyone at home. Peace activity, king activity is all important. Who cares about pawns short term? He's going to regain the material here, and... Yes, white can bail out with uh, a move such as rook b6 now, offer a trade of rooks. He does so to protect his queenside pawns, but opposite color bishops, it's just pawns all on one flank. Unlike yesterday, Robert, where we had the trousers separated past pawns marching up the board, overwhelming black on both flanks, this time with uh, everything concentrated just on one side, should be a draw now. And perhaps even a draw without one of these uh, two pawns there, but now it just easy you put your bishop in line with the c5 square so white's never able to push through and with these last trades i think the players will agree to a draw in the near future david a hard fought game in this first one <laughs> bishop b5 is funny and rook c1 is one of those big questions because it could lose the game for white in the near future i don't think it's a losing move but it can get you into a troublesome ending look at those pawns for white we're talking about isolated pawns but oh my goodness david why would Magnus choose this path? Because rook c2, going right after f2, which hits h2, and also a2. Do you like this decision from Magnus? He doesn't look too bothered, but the evaluation bar is. He doesn't look bothered, but I would be terrified allowing this capture with a check and another capture. This is maybe what Magnus has missed. Will we see a reaction on the camera? We do. Magnus is saying, what have I done? I missed that. Not only is there a huge threat right now with the black bishop moving out of the way with a check, but he's simply down a pawn, Magnus Carlsen. Watch out, the fourth rank that's discovered attacks. No way for white to regain the material. He's down a pawn, fighting for his life in this game, Robert. And look at him. He is beside himself because he's like, how could I miss this? The king is on a dark square. Black has a dark square bishop. You are defending the a4 pawn tactically, and king e2 is the best move for white. But I think black has king f7 as a response and just trying to get that bishop out of here. Well, one thing to note is that white is threatening bishop takes f6 in these positions. So if black says, oh, let me protect my a pawn with a3, that bishop can capture the pawn over there. Uh, although rook f2 check makes things a bit interesting, I do think that white can get away with this tactic. Yeah, I think you're right, Robert. Bishop takes f6 is a neutralizing uh, threat right now, regaining the material, getting pieces off. Alireza very cleverly offers a trade of rooks, and now a huge judgment call for Magnus Carlsen. Does he get the rooks off the board? Um, there's a threat against the h2 pawn as well. It feels like material's disappearing. I do think that should be a draw. Um, I would definitely capture this f6 pawn right now. Um, we'll talk about bishops and pawns of opposite color, of wrong color, sorry, uh, soon, but... Yeah, it's definitely asking questions of Magnus and Robert, take it away. Oh, the bar drops. Wait, what's happened here? I was about to say this should be a draw, but apparently this is a blunder from Magnus Carlsen. He might have brought his king in the wrong direction. The king could have gone after that A pawn. And what white needs to do is give up the bishop on D8 for that A4 pawn. But guess what you can't do when you have a bishop? Get to the other color. So if you could just attack it and take it, even if it costs your bishop, immediately the game is a draw, but not anymore. And the same colored bishops, David, that will allow black to bring his own bishop back to try to get in the same diagonal, all trades in the king and pawn endgame should be leading to a win for Alireza. Yeah, he's gonna bully that white bishop away now. He's got that extra pawn. King of pawn endgames are winning for black. He's gonna put his bishop back now on the e7 square, and he's gonna be able to push. The white king will at some point have to give way 
uh, will have to uh, kind of run back to stop the progress of that pawn, but then the Black King will start running uh, in the right direction. And uh, the reason it's running there is because a1 is a dark square. It uh, complements your bishop, um, something you were hinting upon earlier, Robert. And wow, this one, I don't know how easy it is. I think uh, you do have to be slightly careful about when you push your pawns, but Magnus is suffering here and it's so self-inflicted. It was that one blunder we saw him react to earlier. I mean, I think it was just a strange oh. decision. And Oliver Reza, oh my goodness, Dave, you know what's about to happen? is he's going to force the pawn to a3. This is brilliant awareness from Magnus Carlsen. He is going to force the black pawn forward. It can be defended by the bishop, but then the white king goes back to b1. This is incredible. Wow. Just the vision, the foresight. I mean, the just the bravery to go for this, Magnus. He did it instantly. I was going to say you shouldn't push the pawn forward yet because the white king can still run towards it, but he goes the other way, Magnus Carlsen, and... Fortress. I mean, we all know what Magnus says about fortresses. He said once that uh, he didn't believe in them and he's been misquoted ever since. But uh, this is the definition of a fortress. Once the black pawn is on a3, the white king will, as you mentioned, sit on b1. And there's no way to force it out of that cave, of that hiding place. It's going to be stalemating ideas there. The white king will simply uh, kind of step between b1, uh, a1, c2, c1, wherever you force it. And it will be a draw. I think we'll see it play out, Robert incredible and white is kind of threatening a3 himself to then bring his king and hit the black pawn because it's on a light square can't be defended by the bishop so uh black may have to play a3 and then the white king just goes back into the its own corner so this is actually wild and i just can't believe that magnus spotted that quickly like you can sense that there are some drawing techniques but to he had this in the back of his mind like he knew the drawing zone that is crazy. And that's why he's the best in the world, Magnus Carlsen. He has an extra gear compared to uh, a lot of top players. He knows when to sit back, suffer. He knows how to draw even the most hopeless looking of positions. And here we go, everyone. We're going to learn a lesson. A bishop is not enough, even with the right color corner, <laughs> because of this stalemate idea. Look at that. Magnus willingly putting his king in the corner. But you cannot trap it. You cannot cage it. And uh, Stalemate will end this game most likely any moment now. Look at Ferruja on the camera as well. Well, that makes a lot of sense in terms of style. And I guess, Lucas, I have a question for you. Of, you, know, you seem to follow chess. Is there a specific player that is a favorite of yours or that you feel like resembles your racing style? You know, who uh, do you root for on the chessboard? I don't follow chess uh, that deep to understand uh, the, the, the way that players... Uh, uh, play but um, you have to tell me uh, my style is more like I would move my pieces steadily and build up slowly until I have the and even exchange pieces to be to go to the end game that would be more my style try to manage to get the other driver to the end of the race while the the percentage on the battery and the strategy and the tires are more worn out so I try to to make my moves at the end game. Oh, wow, Lucas. It sounds like you're describing Magnus Carlsen's chess style, or at least Magnus when he's in the mood, mood to grind down his opponents and outlast them. Um, speaking of which, this has been a very long game. It looks like it's about to be a draw. But uh, Lucas, thank you so much for joining us again. We'll definitely have that rematch sometime. Thank you. No, but uh, the, the rematch will be different this time. I have an idea for you, David. Wow, Ferruja, he definitely plays best with one minute on his clock, Robert. It's crazy how he keeps finding the best move every single time, uh, despite the enormous pressure on him. And I'm just looking for Magnus for ways to play for a win, and it might actually cause him to lose the game. So be really careful at this current turn. He plays queen d3. I was thinking rook d6, but I realized the a2 pawn was also hanging with check. So he keeps the rook defended. As you're pointing out, g6 is loose. And 12 seconds for Ferruja. He makes a mistake here, but what is the knockout? E6? Oh, that is so difficult, E6, Robert. We're both reacting because that is almost superhuman, pawn to E6. It's due to the fact that the Black Queen is tied down defending her G pawn, uh, that she cannot go and grab that. And if White can establish a strong pass pawn, that might just overwhelm the Black Army. There's no checks. C2 is covered right now. Uh, the Black Queen can check. The White King will slide and Magnus finds it. Oh. He finds the key move. 
He's winning. Of course he does. Magnus Carlsen found the key defense. Now he finds what should be a winning move, but still difficulty ahead. Quick note that Wesley So did defeat Dennis Lazvik in that Armageddon game. He wins Division Two and the big prize there. But come on, David, what's going on here? How should White proceed? Because E6 is losing. F5? He just thrown all his pawns forward. Wow, brilliant from Magnus Carlsen. He knows he needed to cut the Black Queen's communication with the E6 pawn. Now he can slowly, surely advance this pawn forward. First he gives a check. I was going to say eliminate the Black Rook. There we go. Maybe not the most accurate, but still winning. And once the Black Rook is traded, it's the E pawn that will crown Magnus's glory. And uh, it's just one check. The White King will hide. I'm not sure which square. But Robert, he's on the brink now. And you see that it's not about the pawn quantity but the quality the e6 pawn about to become on the seventh rank can he just go e7 or should he trade rooks first with queen d7 to follow Ooh, both look very tempting magnus with 25 seconds now alareza with just two seconds on the clock uh, my first inclination would be to trade rooks just because i'm scared of a counterattack against the white king but magnus he could well be tempted to push first still just two squares away from touchdown, two moves away from glory, potentially. Can he trade queens, Robert? Queen to d7, queen to d8 look tempting. Uh, you don't want to allow any counterplay, but with queens off, there we go. Oh, nice try from Ferugia. Five seconds from Magnus as well. He's in time trouble all of a sudden, and if the queens are traded, the black king is in time, so he plays g4, which is a great move. And how Ali Reza proceeds, I think you can even trade queens, but there's the outside pawn. Wow. Wow, a few seconds each. Magnus reacts. He's, has he missed this move? There's going to be a bunch of checks. White is still winning, but Magnus doesn't realize the White King has to run. Sprint forward. <gasps> he he's just in the wrong square. square. Yeah, F2 comes with check. The King goes back to E2, but that was a mistake. Every single obvious looking move is wrong. Wow, Alireza had a draw by a miracle there. We'll show that later, hopefully. But Magnus now, the King is going to run behind enemy lines to seek safety. If the checks dry up, White wins. White makes a second Queen with check and it's over. I think we're going to see the last few moves of this grand final of the Julius Bear Generation Cup, Robert. Oh, only a few checks remain. The White King has snaked out and is helping to promote a new pawn. This has been incredible, David. First, he saves that endgame, uh, finding that the king could hide in the corner. And now he finds that his king can hide behind enemy lines. And the checks are running out. Oh, be careful. Don't step forward. You would lose the game. Magnus would have been checkmated if he'd walked forward to the F7 square. Now he's zigzagging his way back to safety, but maybe I called it too soon. It's not yet over. He's yet to find the safe haven for his king. He needs to hide behind the black B pawn, potentially. He needs to get in and uh, back and use that pawn as a shield. And it's almost like checkmate against that white king over there, but it cannot be caught. And the king is doing exactly what you said, David. It is running to the other side. You don't get a new queen for that, but you will get a new queen when that pawn successfully goes to e8. But the checks have continued. Wow, the checks have continued, but no more. And Magnus Carlsen wins on time, wins the Julius Bear Generation Cup. It was a king walk. It was close. Magnus, a sigh of relief on his face, Robert. But uh, a deserved winner in the end after an epic battle. Alariza came so close, showed such good chess. But uh, there we go. Wow, such small margins at the top level.